It's a nice little trail, this one. Done it a few times on the Africa Twin and a few others, so should be alright. It's been raining a lot recently, so it's going to be a bit slippy, but... Getting used to the new bike as well. It's very, very different to the KTM, obviously. Different thing altogether, really. Definitely more of a trail bike than an enduro bike. Uh, heavier. Power completely differently delivered. But more than capable of doing any trails, I reckon. Nice little sandy bit. So much rain, it's very compact though. Can be uh, a bit loose through here in the when the sun's been shining and it's nice and dry. Lowered the tyre pressures to 15, which is what I normally run. So I'd stop and a little bit of a walk around the 300. Um, Lomo, uh, this is actually a uh, a bag for the crash bars on an adventure bike. Um, they come in pairs, about 38 quid or something. But I put four bolts through the tailpiece right the way through. Use it as a tool bag. Not much in it at the moment because I've just been on the road ride. Um, these are. Again, Lomo, all waterproof panniers. Um, I think they're about 40, 50 quid, these 45, 50 quid. Um, and this is a uh, thing that I've used to attach them to the bike. I found it on a YouTube channel. Uh, it's actually something to do with paintballing. Uh, it's 15 quid on Amazon, absolute bargain. So that's that. I've got a tail tidy on from um, Bikers Bits in Thailand, and a flexi plate. So it doesn't break, broken a few number plates in the past. Um, Michelin Tracker tyres with um, heavy duty Michelin inner tubes. The two millimetre thick ones, not the super heavy duties. And then I put bike seal in the tubes as well. Yeah, all good, thank you. Cheers. Um, the frames scratch easily, so, so I'm told. So I've just put some duct tape on there. Little enduro bag. Um, some visor cleaner, just carry some visor cleaner, some hand sanitizer, and a, normally my credit card or whatever in there for fuel and that one I'm out and about. Um, put the neoprene fork gaiters on to keep the fork seals nice and clean. Um, bark busters and heated grips. Uh, bark busters were a bit of a pain. Had to drill the, there's an insert in the end of the bar to drill that up and tap that to an M8 because these bolts are M8. That's all right. Switch for the spotlights, heated grips, USB power, and the quad lock phone mount. And then uh, I made this screen from the Africa Twin, as I said. So a couple of brackets there, all stainless bolts and stuff, stainless brackets. Works a treat. Quicker pull bar, and then the spots. Um, I think the spots are very good. I mean, that's dip beam. I mean, that's garbage, isn't it? That's really, really not very good at all. But the spotlights uh, make the big difference when you're on the road, just to make people more aware of you. Um, I haven't got the bash plate on at the minute. I'm waiting for that to come. That's coming from Abtech. That's a full aluminium bash plate. It's about £90 pounds on, on uh, eBay. So, yeah, that's a quick walk around the... Uh, the CRF 300L, really pleased with it. It will do 70 75 on the motorway, dual carriageway, quite happily. And then on the trails, you know, pretty much what you'd expect from a 250L with a bit more power. Obviously, heavier than the KTM that I did have previously, but much more comfortable, much more usable. You know, if I want to go to Wales or 
going down to Exmouth later in the year. I'll quite happily ride this down there, you know, whether it was on the dual carriageways or uh, we're actually going to take the Great Western Trail. But uh, yeah, you couldn't do that on a on a 350 comfortably on a KTM. Probably need a service before you got it home. Whereas these are 8,000 mile service intervals, so you know, good dependable little Honda. So yeah, overall very pleased with it. Um, if you need, if you want any links to any other things I've got on, just put a, a, a comment in below, a comments box below, and I'll uh, let you know the details and send you a link to where I got them from. Um, yeah, happy riding, everyone.